Omnidog from Omnidog's Vault here with a Crime Corner interview along with my co-host Taylor Brown. We have colorist and artist Jacob Phillips with us. Jacob's how Jacob, how's it going? <laughs> I already watched that. How's it going? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Yeah, not bad. And you're coming to us from Manchester, England. I am, yeah. And you were telling us a little bit before about your office that it's a it's a what is it? You're working out of a shipping container? Yeah, it's a an upcycled shipping container. So there's um hundred of us hundred units on the yard and they've all been put in the last six months or so. So it's uh, still getting used to it, but yeah, it's pretty good. And it's all, is is it a, a wide mix of uses or is it mostly creative types that have gravitated toward this? Uh, there's quite a mix. Um, there's tattoo artists, there's uh, musicians, there's a barbers, there's uh, like nail and hair uh, people. Um, yeah, loads of stuff. It's pretty good. That sounds pretty interesting. Like its own little thriving metropolis down there. Yeah, yeah. And is it by the water? Yeah, it's uh, it's on it's on a canal, so it's pretty pretty good. But it's um, there's quite limited space for this sort of thing in Manchester, so it's pretty great to have so many people on, on this one yard. Everyone's sort of scrabbling for it. It's great. Yeah, hopefully one day you don't like get like picked up by the big metal hook and get dragged <laughs> somewhere else, right? Yeah, yeah, it's always a danger. It's great watching the new ones come in though, watch them get installed on, That's cool. on, the, uh, on the back of a truck. But um, yeah, it's uh, the wind will just take it eventually, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> so well, Jacob yeah. is very famous for working on Criminal, the books like My Heroes Have Always Been Junkies and Bad Weekend. So you've been working with. Ed Brubaker and your dad, Sean Phillips, on Criminal for about three years now, two years now? Uh, it's been, on Criminal, it's been about a year and a half. Uh, before that, but Junkies, yeah, so maybe about two years total. Um, and then we're starting the new book. Uh, well, it's been, it started being drawn, but I start coloring it in the next sort of month or so. All right, cool. So you're the colorist on those books, and we're going to be talking about a new series that you're going to be that you're working on right now that you're the sole artist on. Yeah, so we'll talk about that in a little bit. So as we get started, I just want to ask you: Have you always wanted to be a comic book artist? Um, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm really bad saying it because it's uh, that's okay. But I I think when I was younger, I definitely did like growing up um, with my dad doing it, and I was surrounded by it constantly, and I used to. Um, use his like uh, his scrap paper. You know, he'd get Marvel and DC paper, and anything that he didn't get, to, get didn't use, I got to use, and that was always great. And like inking his pages and stuff just for fun. Um, but then when it came to being a job, I didn't really want to do it because I've seen how much work goes into it, hmm. um, and I didn't really fancy that. But I, I was working as a, I, well, I still am working as a freelance illustrator. Um, and I was taking these comic jobs that were offered uh, just as like a, as a day, uh, like a, pay, a page rate illustration job. So I had a few people come up to me and say, oh, do you want to illustrate this comic? It's We'll do a 10 page sample and we'll pitch that. And then I was like, oh, these are not, they're never going to get picked up. So it's it's fine. Um, but then, yeah, a couple of them did, and now I've got to draw them. <laughs> <laughs> but so now that I'm going back into it. it. <laughs> um, so, our, I had a question just about colorists in general. Um, you're making your name as a colorist to the United States now. Are, are colorists generally also illustrators, or are some colorists just colorists? Um, I don't know. I think I think most colorists can definitely draw, mm -hmm. um, but whether they do it professionally or not, that's a different thing, I guess. But um, right. no, I think a lot of them. Yeah, it's sort of. It's. It, I think it can offer me a way to to fund the the drawing. So that, that's definitely how it is for me at the moment. Working on an image book for myself, I need to color so I can get paid so mm -hmm. I can afford to do the drawing. Um, so I think that's, that's a lot of 
that could be how it is for a lot of people. But then I guess people as well, they just colour and that's what they that's what they like to do. So I think it depends on the person. Yeah. Yeah, I think colorists are so underrated in comics. People don't really think about it. Whenever the color isn't there, you really notice the big difference that it makes. Yeah, I think it um it sort of contributes to the whole look of the book. Um like if you compare a black and white page to a colored page, most of the time people are going to choose a colored page, even if you don't even think about it. But like Walking Dead's the only thing I can think of really that's that successful. Well, that's successful anyway, but still not colored. But like they still do it well until it finished. Still doing black and white. I think that's quite rare. But then sometimes I can pick up a book and be like, look at the artwork don't like the colour and I won't read it. You know? Yeah. So I think it's all it all works together, doesn't it? That's the that's the point of the whole medium, I guess. So you you tend to look at a book's colour probably more even than we do. Um I think in terms of yeah, maybe I think whenever I pick up a book I look at the art as a whole and um, and that'll make me either buy it or not buy it. Um there's not very many things that I buy just for the writer alone. Um, ah, okay. Mm. I, often artwork will put me off buying something. It's like, um, that's my main sort of draw through a book, I think. Here's an example of your coloring, which is, Taylor, would you agree? We feel like this is different than previous issues of Criminal. It, it's, I think especially um, my heroes not, have always been junkies was very distinct from the previous arcs like by Val Staples and Elizabeth Breitweiser. Yeah. Is that a change that you brought to add in your dad or did they want you to kind of make a big stylistic change? They, well, that the first page of junkies was actually colored by my dad. Uh, okay. So he sort of set this rule that he, he had, he wanted limited colors, pastel colors, and everything was overlaid to make other colors. Um, everything was transparent, and that was sort of, the, and a lot of white, because um, he wanted it to look like an old romance comic. Um, so he sort of gave me that as a rule, and then I sort of went off from there. Um, so they sort of, yeah, they, it was, yeah, they sort of established that as a look before I even got to it. Um, I think it was drawn with that in mind from the off. Um, but then with Criminal, they just sort of said, let me do what I wanted. <laughs> so wow, to experiment a bit more with why, what I wanted to do. Yeah, I went into My Heroes Have Always Been Junkies with that normal criminal coloring style in my head. It was yeah. on the first page, I'm like, whoa, this is so different. It took me a couple of pages to get used to it, but then I loved it. It was so, it fit the story so well. You did a great job. Thank you. Well, I think as well, there was no point in going in and trying to be uh, Betty. And otherwise, they would have just got her to do it. Is that Elizabeth Brettweiser? Yeah. 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 Um, otherwise, yeah, there would have been no point in me doing it. Um, so I think we had to bring something new uh, to it to make it, you know, make it a bit different. Yeah, I think you had that very impressionistic style that kind of fit the dreamy-like atmosphere of that book. I think it really worked well for that, what the story that Ed was trying to tell. So I yeah. thought that was really excellent. And that was the story that you all won an Eisner for, correct? Yes, yeah. That's great. Best graphic yeah. novel, I believe. Yeah, yeah, that was amazing. Yeah, yeah first I love this book. Book on, got an Eisner, so not bad. <laughs> so what's it like working with your, with your dad? Not it's, to make you spill family secrets, but just <laughs> wondering how that goes, working with your dad so closely. I think my mum likes it. Whenever I go go to theirs and it's just we're t constantly talking about work. She's like, Can we just can we stop? Can we talk about something else? Um, <laughs> but no, it's 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 fine. Like we but we have pretty similar styles anyway. Um we like all the same things in terms of artwork mostly. So it's I sort of I think we're on the same wavelength, so it it makes sense. Um there's not that many things that I ever have to go back and change. Everyone seems to be pretty happy with it, sort of first time, and they sort of just trust me to get on with it. Um, but I think it means that he can be a lot more uh, blunt 
than he would be if he was if it was <laughs> that he didn't know as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's pretty good. And did you um, did you enjoy comics growing up, or how were you exposed to them just through your dad? Yeah, well, back in the day when I was young and he was uh, drawing Marvel and DC, he'd get boxes of comps every month, everything they release. So I got to like pick through that and I'd take whatever I want, I could read it. So I had, you know, a seemingly endless supply of- wow. uh, Every kid's comics. dream. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I think as I got a bit older, I stopped reading as much. And then I got back into it, but more in the sort of like, Fantagraphics sort of scene rather than Marvel and DC, mm -hmm. uh, sort of more more of the indie scene. Um, like I got really really into the Hernandez brothers and Dan Clouds and stuff like that. Um, so that was sort of when I was a teenager. Then I've sort of stuck with that, and now I sort of read a bit of both, um, but mostly it's image stuff and a bit of a bit of Marvel. Uh, not really much DC, but yeah, just sort of, yeah, I sort of stopped stopped reading that sort of stuff. Through, but, all, yeah. through all those comic books, did you pick up um, an influence? Was there an artist that influenced you the most? Oh, I don't know. I guess I must have done. There must be loads that you just don't think about. You know, I think it's uh, every time I read anything now, like I just finished reading the the last trade of Paper Girls, and that and Cliff's artwork in that it's just like it's definitely in my head when I'm drawing now. Mm. So I think every time I've read anything, it gets its way in there, and you pick up things all the time. But I don't, I couldn't really cite any, you know, main influences. I'm like, this is what I want to draw. Like, um, it's more just a sort of culmination of everything that I like. Yeah, everyone's the influence, even the bad artists that you didn't like. It's like, I don't want to be like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's kind of an influence. Not to do. Right. So how were you brought on board with My Heroes Have Always Been Junkies? Obviously, your dad's the main artist, but how did it, How did that whole process happen where they decided we want to bring Jacob on board to color well, the book? Originally, my dad was going to color it himself. That's why they didn't get Elizabeth to do it. Because um, he was like, oh, I know. Because I think... Because he had such a vivid image in mind of what he wanted to do, it wouldn't be fair to give uh, Betty such a strict constraints on what she could what she could do. Whereas with me, hadn't done it before, he could basically just be like, "You have to do exactly this." Um, he could be a lot stricter on what what he asked for. Um, so when, but yeah, so he was going to color it himself, and then ran out of time obviously yeah. and then uh so he's like oh we'll get jake to do it uh, <laughs> I've, been, I've been working um yeah as an illustrator anyway so you know he knew i could do it um and then he just sort of i guess he just it took a lot of faith for him to just be like let's just give him a go and on ed, ed as well um because ed had no idea if i could do it right uh, a lot of confidence for sure that's a big deal that they both trusted you to do it yeah, yeah, it's quite an honor. I heard Ed say in an interview that you used to pose for your dad for photo reference for for the kids in Criminal back yeah, when yeah. I first started. So that's pretty cool. You used to pose for the kids, and now you're an adult working on the actual title. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, even now, um, when my dad did the cover for Junkies, so I think it was before he'd even started drawing the book, he got my friend to model for, for that. Like he's always getting... Uh, whoever to uh, to pose for his photo reference. So can you walk us through the creation of an uh, of an issue of Criminal, of what that's like on your end? Yeah, so we all, uh, well, me and my dad anyway, have got a Dropbox folder, um, which we're both linked up to, and he'll put the, t the script as he gets it. Because Ed writes, you know, four pages at a time, and we'll send it over. Uh, and then my dad will draw those four pages, and then he'll he'll write the next four pages. Um, it's very rare that there's a whole script in one go. Um, oh, really? Yeah. So he'll write the pages, and then that will go onto the Dropbox, so I can see it. But I never really read ahead. 
I wait for the pages to come in. So I get about four pages at a time drawn. Um, and then I'll, and that'll be the first time I look at it really. And then I don't even read the script until I'm coloring usually, like page by page. I never read the full script. Um, <laughs> I always just sort of see how it goes. Don't have uh, a video to add. <laughs> I, uh, so he'll, yeah, so he'll put these pages up and then I'll get them flatted um by the guy that he does yeah does flats every month for me and then i'll get those back and then i'll color them sort of i can do about five pages a day so i usually try and let them build up a bit and then i'll sort of color it all in a in a week um wow. and then can you it's usually flatting for people who may not know what's that can you explain flatting for people who may not know oh, yeah. so um i basically give uh this guy the the artwork the black and white artwork and he'll go in and fill in all the shapes with a sort of arbitrary color um so that i can then go in and just fill all the all the right colors drop in the right colors basically mm -hmm. um as as that's just my sort of base layer um of, of color then i work layers over the top of that um but yeah so it's just so i can save myself an hour per page going in and you know, filling in every every shape the, uh, with a color, because especially with my dad's stuff, none of the lines join up. There's loads of gaps everywhere. So if I went in and just pressed fill, it would fill everything. It wouldn't just be that. But, you know, if I was trying to fill a hand in, it would it would be everywhere. It wouldn't just be that hand. So he saves me, yeah, like an hour and a half per page. So that's pretty great. Because you work digitally with everything. Yeah. Oh, you do. Um, yeah, in terms of color, I do sometimes with illustration stuff. Um, I do it sort of traditionally, but a lot of the time as well, I scan textures and stuff like that in. Um, not so much with coloring, but with covers and stuff like that, I'll I'll scan textures and overlay them digitally and stuff like that. Hmm. And the final issue of this current run of Criminal just came out this past Wednesday. Yeah. And so that's the final issue for this current arc, and you're taking a break from it for a while, right? Yeah, we're gonna do another graphic novel, a western. Um, so that'll take us up till next year. I, no, I don't know when that's out. That's out in May. So I don't know what the plan is after that. I don't get told anything. I don't even know if my dad knows. <laughs> I, I might have a plan, I don't know. <laughs> but we'll be back to a, I guess to a, a monthly series after that. Okay. There's a cult that's coming up. Yes, yeah. And that's a western. Yeah, so it's. Uh, I don't know. I don't really know much about the story yet, but I know uh, it's sort of split between sort of the. Uh, I think it's the early 1900s and the uh, maybe 30 years earlier, and it's sort of flashbacks to this guy when he was, you know, a cowboy in the West. Um, so that should be pretty fun to do. So. You you haven't actually started on it yet. I haven't started coloring it yet. It's, I don't know how much of it's been written. About 10 pages have been drawn, but I haven't started coloring yet. Oh, okay. I thought it was already done. No, no, it'll be done. My deadline's like mid-March. Okay. So, uh, it'll be done, I assume, hours before that deadline. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, do deadlines freak you out at all? Uh, yeah, at the moment. I'm working long days, six days a week, because I'm trying to get uh, my book finished. Because it comes, that comes out in May as well, the same day as Pulp, because the first issue of uh, that Texas Blood. So, uh, and that I'm, Texas Blood is your book? Yeah, so that's my new book, uh, which comes out. Yeah, comes out in May as well. So what? I'm trying to get them both done. Oh wow! In March. What so, can you tell us? Can you tell us anything about your book? Uh yeah, it's, it's um it's a crime drama set in a sort of fictional county in Texas. Um, it's about the sheriff of this county, and there's been a murder, and the the brother has to come back to town. He's sort of like escaped his dark past in this county, escaped out. He's got to come back now to deal with all the everything that's happened in the murder of his brother. Um, and it's this sort of town is catching up with him and it's closing in on him. It's all his sort of dark past coming back to haunt him. So we sort of 
watch that unfold throughout the uh, six issues, this first first arc. That sounds great. Sounds yeah. like a book we'll definitely review on this show in the future. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun, it, and it's. Uh, I think people will like it, hopefully. But the first um, preview is out now in in the last episode in the last series of Criminal, uh, mm. uh, last issue. Sorry, it's uh, the, there's a few preview pages in the back of that, so that's the first sort of look for everyone. And you're the I, artist and colorist in this book. What's that? Sorry, uh, you're the artist and colorist. I am. Yeah. So it's uh, even more work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how long does it take you to draw ink and color an entire issue? You filled in for us with coloring, but how long does it take you to do that when you're doing everything? I don't know. It's hard to sort of tell because I've the way that I've done it, I've drawn three issues, and then I went back and colored them all, and now I'm drawing the next three issues, and then I'll go back and color them all. Um, but it's taken me, I think it's taken me about five months to do it all, but that's also with coloring criminal and other things as well. So it's hard to tell, but I can draw, pen I can pencil and ink two pages a day, and then I can color five pages a day. Mm. Wow, so, so you work pretty quickly compared to most. Yeah, well, I sort of have to at the moment. I'd rather work slower, but. But you got those deadlines. Yeah, at the moment I'm trying to pencil the last three issues all in one go. Um, so I'm trying to hit five pages a day pencils. So we'll see how that goes. I read that final issue of Criminal last night. It was great. And I saw the five pages of that Texas blood and it looks phenomenal. You can tell it looks a lot like your dad's, but it's distinct and different too. Yeah. I think you have a very distinct style, which is really great. Yeah, it was, it was tough because yeah, we draw quite similarly. So when I was going to colour it, and I was like, I don't know how to do it because I don't want it to look like criminal. Um, but that's sort of you know the way that I know how to colour. So I had to sort of try and think of something else. So it's still quite similar, but yeah, there's definitely a, a different look to it. I think. Yeah, the colouring definitely looks different than criminal for sure. I definitely noticed that. That's good then. So how long is this series going to be? Do you have any idea? Uh, yes, yeah, so it's it's six issues to start with. Um, so that'll take us up till October and then I'm taking a break and doing a, a different job, uh, a diff another series, which I can't say much about at the moment. And then I'll be back on that Texas blood sometime after that. I'm not really sure about sort of time frames, but it's going to be ongoing. Um, but with a sort of gaps in between. Okay. And this is a title for image. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And your other ongoing series you can't say much about. Will that be an image book too? Yeah. Okay, great. So yeah. what were the biggest like surprises and challenges that came with being the main artist on a series compared to just coloring? Was there anything you were just surprised about or was it a big challenge for you? Just the sheer amount of the work, I guess. Um, because, yeah, because I'm coloring it, drawing it, uh, lettering it all myself. It's sort of it builds up a lot more. I can't just sort of do it in a week and it's done. It's sort of just constant. Uh, so it's just a bit. It's it's a much it's much bigger, a lot, a lot much harder work. But um, it's basically as I thought it would be. I guess because because I've grown up with it all my life, I sort of know what goes into it. Um, so it wasn't there wasn't really anything that was surprising, um, which I guess I'm pretty lucky. Hmm. Lucky to to be able to say that I guess for a lot of people who don't know don't know anything about it going into it, um, but I've still had to you know ring up my dad every every other day and be like how do I do this <laughs> <laughs> or or you know emailing image and being like what what do I do <laughs> so a lot of uh, a lot of learning you have a big advantage being able to call your dad a lot of guys don't have that so that's <laughs> awesome yeah yeah. Yeah, I'm going to milk it for all it's worth. <laughs> you should. <laughs> what um some of the maybe some personal stuff like what do you li do you listen to music while you draw? Yeah, uh, it depends on what I'm doing. So if I'm thumbnailing, I can't really listen to music because I have to you know concentrate. Mm -hmm. but, uh, 
and pencils, I can listen to music. Inking and colouring, I can listen to music and maybe a podcast or audio book. Because um, those you can just sort of do because all the thinking has been done already. Yeah. Um, Taylor, like, Taylor and I have very different tastes in music. I like ambient music to read to, and he likes jazz to read to. What right. is there? Is there a typical music that you like to draw to? Um, not really. Like soundtracks are good. Um, I listen to a lot of film soundtracks, but not really. I listen to like I listen to a quite a broad range in general, and there's nothing that I can't listen to whilst I work. I don't think. Mm. But like I say, yeah, sort of when I'm. Thumbnailing, I can't listen to anything. Well, I can maybe listen to a soundtrack when I'm thumbnailing, but nothing with words or anything right. mm. yeah, engaging, something not like, distracting. And thumbnailing is whenever you set up the panels and the blocking of the scene, correct? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I even have, I can show you now. I have my sketchbook right here. So this is um, the page I'm working on at the moment. Um, so I, it's super, super rough. Um, and it's just to figure out how everything works, basically, and how to tell the story. And so each bit, I'll have the speech bubbles or captions or whatever needs to go in. But other than that, it's really rough. So uh, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know if anyone else could look at it and be able to read what's happening, but it's just so I can then go and take my photo reference and find any images that I need and stuff like that. Um, and then I start building it from that. And then the pencils are a lot more. Uh, fleshed out. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people know about all the work that really goes into arranging these books. So I think it's really cool to see behind the scenes to really see yeah. what you guys are doing to make these awesome books for us. That's really yeah. interesting. Well, I, I, that's the, I love seeing all that sort of stuff from other artists. So at the moment, I'm trying to, on my Instagram and Twitter and stuff, I'm trying to um, post a panel from thumbnail to finished color. Hmm. Uh, in stages and so i post four images that you can sort of flick through or whatever um just because like, i love it when people do stuff like that so i assume everyone else does as well <laughs> but um, yeah. i guess it, it must yeah i guess it's interesting if you're not aware of, as well to show people what goes into just one image that you read in you know half a second Right. As someone who can barely draw, I look at these books and these finished products and think, how is the, how does someone do this? And so like, yeah. Yeah, it's really cool to see the process to see how people actually put pen to paper. Yeah. And make yeah. It yeah. Yeah. That is all the photo reference of me in like ridiculous positions. Because <laughs> <laughs> I draw from, from photos of me. So especially now when I'm in the studio, big glass doors on the front and I have to close the big metal doors outside so no one can see me in my no, in my cowboy hat or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> what um what so I can I'll put it into the description of the interview, but what um when people want to follow you on Instagram so they can see these things, what is your Instagram tag? Uh, my Instagram is Jacob Phillips Illustration and my Twitter is Jacob R underscore Phillips. Jacob no, I don't match. <laughs> Okay, wait. <laughs> so if you're watching this, please follow Jacob on Instagram or Twitter if you have it. I follow you on Instagram, and I, I really appreciate those posts that you were just talking about, like seeing from the from the paneling to the thumbnails to the pencils. It's really cool to see that process. You post a lot of really cool stuff, so you should definitely follow them. I'm glad you like it, and it's not just going to waste. <laughs> <laughs> so we talk a lot about crime books, obviously, on this on this um, video, on this video series, and we talk about crime movies that pair well with the crime comics that we're reading. What are some of your favorite crime movies? Oh, I don't even know. I don't, I don't, I'm not that into them, I don't think. Um, I watch a lot of films, but I don't really, I don't even know. I can't even think well, of what anything. Are some, what are some movies you've watched lately that really struck you then? Um, I watched uh, the gentleman, which that's a that's a crime. There you go. There's a crime movie, uh, the gentleman, um, which was really great actually. So I watched that a couple of weeks ago, um, and Little Women. I watched that recently. But now it's you know it's Oscar season, so it's all this uh, all the worthy films. Um, but I watched uh, I watched Black Klansman again. Re rewatched that one. Uh, 
the other day on my birthday because I had to took the day off for my birthday and I was watched a film for the afternoon and that was my treat. So, <laughs> um, do you want to ask him the collection question, Taylor? Yeah. So most of our viewers on this channel are avid collectors of comics, collected editions, statues. Um, you can tell me about uh, that. Yeah, Jess has a lot of those statues I was just talking about. Is there anything that you? Is there anything you collect? Yeah, I buy a lot of books, uh, and I buy a lot of records. And I recently got into re uh, to buying Blu-rays again. Mm. Um, I like to have, you know, physical, especially books and and records. Like I like to have the physical thing. So you can't really tell here because this is not my wall of books. But above me, there's a big. Uh, row of books and on the far side of the studio over there there's bookcases as well and my flat is just full of them um yeah i like i like i like to buy books and i read i read a lot of novels as well um and i don't like getting rid of them so <laughs> right. you sound like us for sure yeah. yeah you fit in pretty well what novels do you like to read well at the moment i'm reading um graceland which is like a novelization of Elvis's life, um, mm. which is pretty good. I'm a big Elvis fan as well, um, as I'm sure you can tell. Um, <laughs> uh, so that's really interesting, but um, all sorts of stuff really, but mostly yeah, mostly fiction. Um, I don't really do nonfiction, but um, anything really. I, sort I like, of, I like that you're a vinyl collector. I am what? too. What did you say, sorry? I, I said I like that you're a vinyl collector. I am too. Yeah, it's much. Yeah, I like to, you know, have a be able to see as well how my taste changes as I, as I as I keep buying them, and it's great. But yeah, it takes a lot of space. Yeah, it does. Yeah, and you're really quickly yeah. running out of space. He's. I think you're supposed to be uh, quitting your vinyl collecting, but it's getting harder than you thought it was going to be. I was supposed to. Yeah, I got the <laughs> edict from my wife that I wasn't supposed to collect any more vinyl, but I just placed another order. <laughs> <laughs> ah, future Jess can worry about that. Yeah, that's future Jess's problem. Do you have an item or a piece in your collection that you're most proud of or the one that you really hold on to the most that's most important to you? Um, not really. Um, no, I'm not that sort of sentimental with things. I sort of use them and put them on the shelf, and I never look at them again. Pretty much. Okay. Uh, I, I, in terms of comics and stuff, I, I I definitely revisit them, but there's not really anything that stands out as sort of like my prized possession. Okay, they're more for use than for looking at, in a way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like them as a, as a whole, but yeah, comics. I always I'm always pulling them out, especially at work. If I can't think of how to tackle a panel or a page or whatever and i'll i'll pull out loads of books that i love and see how they did it um but in terms of like yeah novels i sort of read them and they go on the shelf or they get lent out to friends but they sort of stay there then i don't really reread re novels you mentioned paper girls is something uh you read are there any other current comics that you're into that you might recommend to us um November, I loved that. The first, the first book of November, the Matt Fraction, um, and Elsa. I can't even pronounce the last name. How do you say it? Uh, Shiretta, Shiretteri, Shiretteria, Shiretta, Shiretta. Yeah, huh. that's like an image graphic novel, I believe. Yeah, it's like a series that they're working on. Yeah, yeah. So I think the new one's out in in spring sometime. But yeah, that was that was great. That one. Um, mm. What else have I been reading recently? Mm, the Harley Quinn, uh, the is it Steve Pugh's book? Um, that was really great. But yeah, not that much in terms of series. There's a few things that I really want to read, but I'm waiting for them to come out as paperbacks, the trade paperbacks. Mm. Uh, I'm trying not to buy monthly issues anymore because I just have nowhere to put them. Um, so some of them I buy on my iPad and I read them like that, but I prefer, you know, to have the real book. So I, I tend to wait, but, um, all the TKO stuff at the moment, all their releases are really good. Uh, oh, cool. 
I read um, Sentient recently. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, we like that too. Yeah, the TPA has a lot of really cool books coming out. We like we like Sarah by Garth Ennis was great. Yeah, goodbye. Par- good was it Good Night Paradise or Goodbye Paradise? That was awesome about the homeless man investigating that murder. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah and uh, was it Seven Deadly Sins? Was that the cowboy one they did? I mean, yeah. yeah. And the fearsome Doctor Fang was my favorite. I haven't read that one actually. It's on, it's on my pile of to read books. That's kind of like an Indiana Jones type book, right? Yeah. Okay. yeah wild adventure. So um, what are some other side projects you have going? You mentioned you have other side projects going on while you're doing your comics. Yeah, I do a lot of um, illustrating. So I'm, at the moment, I'm working on some stuff for um, Blu-ray covers. So for Arrow Academy, um, who are sort of like Criterion, but UK. Um, and they reissue old films, remastered HD Blu-rays. Um, so I'm doing a few of those, um, which I'm not allowed to say, I don't think, until they're announced. Mm-hmm. But yeah, they're always, they're always great. I get to watch a film that I would never usually watch. They're usually really obscure, like Korean films that I would never pick up normally. Um, so I watch those and I get to do a painting of it. So it's it's pretty it's great fun. And then podcasts as well. I do some stuff with the BBC. They do um, sort of true crime podcasts and stuff like that. So I do um, do illustrations for those. And yeah, so whatever I'm doing um, some drawings at the moment for illustrated memoir. So there's a lot of hawk drawings in it. It's about this guy that lived in in uh, California and he's like studied hawks. Um, so that's great. So I'm doing like pencil drawings of these hawks, which is a nice change of pace from digitally drawing comics. So, so you're definitely a busy guy, is what I'm hearing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe too much at the moment, but you know. well, that's good for an artist to be have too much. That's much yeah. better than to be a starving artist. Yeah. <laughs> Would you ask? Do you have any other questions? Uh, I don't. I I just wanted to make sure we talk about um, the pulp that's coming up, and that is supposed to be released on May twentieth. It says here. I think it's twenty seventh now. I think it's moved back a week. Okay, okay good. Um, but I might be wrong. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. And then that Texas Blood is your own book, and that's coming out in the summer or spring. That's coming out on the twenty seventh oh, May as well. It's coming out the twenty seventh too. So that's a yeah. big day for you. Yeah, right. well, it'd be good to have, yeah, have them both on the same same release. So, uh, yeah, that'd be great. And also, the Cruel Summer arc of Criminal is going to come out in a hardcover in June as well. So that's going to be awesome. We're going to be re- reviewing that and Pulp in June, hopefully, on our channel. So we're yeah. both really excited about that. Jess and I always look forward to what you, your dad, and Ed have to offer. You're our favorite creative team in comics. Thank you. That is a true statement. Yeah, we're not. Yeah, we're not just buttering you up. We actually. Yeah. Mean it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. This has been great, and it's uh, wonderful to know you're so busy. Um, a lot of talented artists are not, but it's good to know that <clears throat> a talented artist such as yourself has got a ton of stuff to do. And uh, just speaking for myself, and and the colors in these two books, I just think they're great. And we learned a lot more about color today. And we'll learn more about your illustrating um, when that Texas blood comes up. Yeah, please, but everyone buy these books if you haven't already. They're both phenomenal. I've read them both like three times, and they're they get better every single time. So please buy them if you haven't already. Yeah, well, thanks, thanks for having me on. It was a lot of fun. Thank you. So, on behalf of my co-host and my guest Jacob Phillips, my co-host Taylor Brown. I say peace and love, peace and love. Thank you for tuning in.